I'm sure you've experienced consuming caffeine and feeling like you're just bouncing off the walls. And on the contrary, I'm sure there's been times where you've consumed caffeine where you don't feel much effect at all. But what I want to discuss in this video is the fact that our genetic makeup can actually dictate how our body responds to caffeine. And this can make a big, big difference when it comes to the potential metabolic benefits that we get out of caffeine. But before I get into some of the research on the genetic side, I want to explain how caffeine works because it's important that you know this. And I want you to pay very, very close attention. And when I get to the end of this video, I'm going to explain a study that I thought was very, very interesting from Harvard that might show why we get so addicted to coffee, but might also show how we can manipulate the heck out of it to get even more from our caffeine. Okay, so how caffeine works in the body. It works on something that are called adenosine receptors. Now, what caffeine is like is caffeine emulates that adenosine. It looks just like adenosine to the body. So what that means is that you have these adenosine receptors in your brain, and they look sort of like this, and adenosine looks like this, and adenosine fits perfectly in there and slides on in. Now, what that essentially means is that adenosine is triggering us to get drowsy. You see, adenosine plays a big part in what's called the sleep-wake cycle. So when adenosine starts to pour into those receptors, that is telling our body, okay, it's time to get tired, it's time to relax, it's time to get a little bit drowsy. It's a natural part of our circadian rhythm. Now, what caffeine does is it artificially clogs that receptor. So it looks a lot like adenosine, except slightly bigger, so it clogs it and it occupies it. So that way, the adenosine can't get into the receptor. It can't trigger you to feel tired. You are essentially artificially telling yourself that you're awake. But as far as your body is concerned and the metabolic process is, you're actually wide awake. So that's exactly how it works when it comes to the neurological side of things. But what about the feel-good response that we get from caffeine? Have you ever noticed that when you are jumped up on caffeine that it's able to cause sort of this positive response a lot easier with you? For example, if you're jumped up on caffeine and someone comes up to you and gives you a compliment, that reward system intrinsically is usually better. And if you haven't paid attention to that, I encourage you to pay attention to it because it's pretty interesting. Because what happens is when those adenosine receptors are blocked, it heightens the effectiveness of dopamine. Now, I'm going to put this in realistic terms. Now, there are certain drugs out there, and I think you know the ones, that increase amounts of dopamine, make you feel really, really good all the time. So caffeine, in effect, is causing a very similar reaction to that just at a natural level. So that's why you feel so good. But what about fat burning? How is caffeine helping you with fat burning? You see, caffeine does something very interesting in the body. When those adenosine receptors are blocked, it triggers sort of a chain reaction in the body where the body starts to metabolize fuels a little bit differently. See, it actually starts to store glycogen and maintain glycogen, and it triggers the free fatty acids that are bound to a glycerol molecule, i.e. triglycerides. It unbinds those free fatty acids, puts them into the bloodstream so that you can start burning them. So the thing is, is when you do consume caffeine and those fats are mobilized, you have to utilize them. You can't just sit there and hope that your body's going to use them when you're just sitting at rest. You take caffeine in, you get the positive benefits, you're awakened, and then you get moving because the fats are mobilized, then you want to burn them, capitalize on that. Okay, so now let's talk about sensitivity to caffeine, because now that I've gotten all that out of the way, I think you need to understand that there's some variables that actually affect this. You see, the moment that you consume caffeine, the moment it even hits your mouth, your liver is starting to metabolize it. You see, your liver is metabolizing it with something called CYP1A2, and that is an enzyme. That enzyme starts to break down the caffeine, the theobromine, some of these other compounds that have different effects within the body. Whether that means relaxing smooth muscle tissue, whether that means vasoconstricting, shrinking your blood vessels, or whether that creates brain blood flow. It's doing a lot of things and the liver is responsible with that enzyme. Now beyond just the enzyme, that CYP1A2 enzyme is triggered by something called the CYP1A2 gene. See, we're getting kind of crazy now. We look at our genetic makeup, and some of us have a gene that switches on that enzyme easier than others. You see, it comes down to something that's called the AHR gene. Now, I'm not going to get crazy scientific on genetics. It's a really interesting world. We're finding now that our genes, our genetics overall, play a role in how enzymes function and our sensitivity to caffeine. So that AHR enzyme can or cannot trigger that CYP1A2 enzyme to go which means we may not break down caffeine as efficiently as the person next to us. 
On the contrary, we may break down caffeine much faster and much more efficiently than the person next to us. In fact, about 10% of the population are found to have sort of a defect in that enzyme, a defect in that gene that makes it so that they're very, very tolerant to caffeine. Have you ever known someone that can just guzzle gallons of caffeine and never have an issue? That's probably the case. But now I want to talk about something that's even more interesting, and it circles back to that dopamine response that I talked about a little bit earlier. And you're going to see how this plays into sort of that risk-reward system when it comes to eating the right foods in just a second. So researchers at Harvard University started looking at that genetic response to caffeine, and they started finding that we actually had genes that affected our dopamine response with caffeine in general. So that means there were people that had a negative effect with caffeine, sometimes made them feel a little bit worse, but then there were those that actually had a positive effect even more so, where they were more excitable and had more of a dopamine response, causing caffeine to not only be extraordinarily good at mobilizing fat and helping them wake up, but also giving them the motivation that they need to really adhere to a diet. You see, that's some pretty amazing stuff that's actually getting backed up with science. It's something a lot of us have assumed, but now we know that caffeine can actually help us adhere almost literally to a diet. So I guess the short answer is, caffeine is not necessarily bad for you, as long as you understand how to use it. We do have to understand that there is a certain level of liver metabolism that happens with that, which means that if you have too much, caffeine is going to become toxic. It's going to become addictive. You're going to have that dopamine reward system where you just want more, but you're also going to get your body used to having the adenosine antagonist, those adenosine receptors blocked. So you do want to cycle on and off every now and then. Now here's the tip that I want to give you that's going to help you maximize your fat loss a little bit more. You see, when you block those adenosine receptors, they get a little bit more weakened every time. So if you do this, you're going to get a lot of benefit. Simply what you want to do is every 14 days, you're going to want to wean yourself off of caffeine for about four days. So let's say you're at day 14. Day 14, consume your normal amount of caffeine. Day 15, cut it down to three quarters. Okay, then day 16, cut it down to one quarter. And then day 17, go cold turkey for one day. Day 18, go cold turkey another day, and then ramp right back up. That cycle happens very, very fast. You restore those enzymes, you restore the sensitivity to that adenosine receptor very, very quick. Now, as always, I'm not a doctor, so you can't take my advice in lieu of professional medical advice, but that's one way that I've learned to continue to get the most out of caffeine without having constant crashes. As always, keep it locked in here on my videos, and if you have any comments or questions about caffeine, let me know. I'm happy to dive in deeper. I'll see you in the next video.